I was asked some questions about the future of AI by a filmmaker. Here are my full answers. I only cut out the parts where I misspoke. Enjoy. Where do you think is the future heading in the field of generative art? Now, one thing that art can't really do, where it is limited, is to be art for the viewer. Because right now, most of the art we have is created by an artist, and then you consume that perspective, but the art can't change after that, after it has been created. Of course, exceptions are out there where you can say, well, I can have a live performance, but once that performance is over, once the artist is gone, that's it, that's that. So either you have been there or it's not there anymore. But with AI, that can stick around. Now, when you look at what is a human, mainly what are we made of? It's that fabric of the social connections, of the cultural connections, of our understandings of the world, of the philosophies in our head. It's very individualized, a very small individual universe that we live in. We only have the information we have learned and we only have the interactions that we have made in our life. But this is the whole cosmos we live in. So when you have an AI, that AI can actually pick that up and work with who you are ask questions and throw that image back at you. And I think that's going to be one of the biggest topics in art in the future that we want to dive into that process of living, of being an individual. And this is also where I think a lot of people are very focused on AI being very general and doing the same thing for everybody and being a service kind of bot out there that helps you do things. I think it's going to go the different way into the life and the world of the individual. So you have AIs that are trained on your needs, on your understandings, on your purposes, so the AI can help you. And it's kind of merging with you into your life, into your process. We see that right now a little bit, for example, with the algorithms we have in social media, where the page is designed the same way, but you only see the content that is interesting to you. So it's very individualized. With AI, the AI can actually understand in the sense that AI can understand anything, um, not in an intelligent way, in a machine way, what you need, who you are, and it can interact with you, also talk with you. We see this also in video games. They already have concepts where they say, we want to have video games where you play it as an individual. We want to play music to you in different situations generated by AI that is just for you. Another player hears different music. Maybe we can also do this with NPCs, with the look of NPCs, with the dialogue. So you talk with the AI. The AI is learning over time what your interests are, how you are talking and can challenge you in different ways that are specific to you. So that can be very interesting. The next question is, what bleeding edge technologies are going to be the norm in the coming few years? Of course, that is hard to say because it's very, very rapid in its development and changing very quickly. Um, but I think we can, in a broader sense, already see that the way we use software right now for image editing, video editing, all these kind of creative processes is changing in a very dramatic way mainly in the way that right now you have all these tools, all these filters, all these kind of effects that you apply to that. And that often requires a lot of understanding on how that process works. While in the future, we are going to describe to the AI what kind of output do we want to have. For example, to retouch a face of the model, to change the daylight situation, maybe also to change the clothing, stuff like that. Where right now it would be really cumbersome to do that. You just type it in as a prompt and then the AI is giving you different suggestions. The AI also understands what's going on in the image, how many people are there, their body positions, the three dimensions of the room. So a lot of things can be done in that regard. And if you think about video, there's even more that can be done with deep faking for the look of different stars of different actors out there and rotoscoping and all these kind of things very cumbersome processes that you can do much quicker with AI. Also, a lot of things that are very slow right now, for example, all this 3D rendering with ray tracing, stuff like that, because AI can simply simulate that. You don't have to render this for that long time. AI will give you a similar or even better output with a very short time. Sometimes you can even get very realistic results right now when you look at different research projects in real time. It's really amazing. Are artists and designers ready to embrace the future? 
they better be because that is their job so that is a really important part of course fine art might be the exception because fine artists are often reclusive they work in this studio they have their very specific philosophies they're working on but if you are in design in the applied arts trends fashions new styles how the society changes what is going to happen in the next years that is your bread and butter so you better be ready to do that and learn all these processes because they are rapidly going to change but also they are very very interesting because right now we are in a situation in a new kind of golden age where suddenly artists have tools they ever dreamed of having them you think about an idea and it becomes magically real so you don't have to slave over hours and hours of creating images painstakingly by hand. You can go through thousands of ideas if you want to. And also the AI can suggest to you even more ideas and you can select from them. And that's going to be a big process also that you curate that, but also you design the AIs by training different models, by bringing up your own workflow, your own way you interact with AIs. And if people say, well, this is less artistic it's absolutely nonsense that is not true like for example think about a painter in the past they had to mix their own colors they had to make their own brushes it was a very cumbersome process to get started to paint a picture and now you sit in your studio with your ipad and a stylus and you paint and start right away and you can save and you can move around the layers there is a huge difference between the painters in the past and the painters today but i think we can all agree that the painters today have a higher output, have an amazing artistic skill and create wonderful pictures. So taking this to the next level will be even more amazing. But the process is not going to be easier. The process is going to be more complex because there's more things to know and there is a lot more topics and ideas and techniques to dive into. What are the risks you think the people in an industry will face in the advent of AI? I'm not sure if there are many risks. Of course, people are always afraid, well, we're going to lose a lot of jobs and people are going to be out of work. I don't think so, because jobs are always changing. The industry, especially the creative industry, because it has to follow trends, it has to be always up to the new technologies, is rapidly changing. You're always in a learning process and a learning curve. And a lot of jobs that we have today have not been even around 10 years ago. All the things we do today, the design processes and all this kind of Web2 uh, technology that we have are new and we have created new technologies. Think about, for example, the GoPro camera was specifically created for these action shots, but also for social media and also how the sharing and the creation of photos has changed from these big cameras with the slow process of raw photography, bringing it into your software, editing and then checking and selecting and then days after posting it somewhere. Right now, you have to photograph, edit, and then share the image within a couple of maybe half an hour. And then it has to be online because afterwards, the fact is already gone and social media is moving so fast. If something happens now, you have to report on it now. There is no in-between time. The cycles are much shorter. So there is always something changing. And we will have a lot more new jobs coming than old jobs coming uh, going away. The people are staying the same if they are willing to upgrade their knowledge and learn new skills. How much is the AI affected by society? Will we ever be able to make a close to unbiased neural network? That's an interesting question, but I would reply to that by the question, how unbiased are we as a society? Can we expect something from an AI that we are not ourselves? Do we even agree on anything to have it unbiased? What does it actually mean, right? Because in different parts of the world, different things are okay or not okay, moral or unmoral, will bring you in jail for 10 years or will you will celebrate you and give you a trophy for doing the exact same thing. So we don't agree on these kind of concepts. And I don't think that's a problem that AI should solve. I rather think, and this is again going back to the individualization of AI, that we should have different AIs that react differently depending on, let's say, what kind of 
country you're in or what kind of region you're in or who is using the AI because you expect different things. And if we have a technology that can respond to the individual and cater to the needs of the individual, why would we go with a process that treats everybody the same and has a one fits all solution when the technology is built to have a specific for every single person solution. That makes a lot more sense to me. Of course, bias is not great and um, there's a lot of downside. So if in a country something is seen as unmoral and bad and shouldn't happen and we have a public AI, for example, for a public service, then this AI should be without that bias. But you can remove that kind of data from the AI so that it doesn't happen happen in that way. And if the AI doesn't learn from the interaction with the people, you can basically lock it down to the process. So I think for public AIs, we can make it unbiased in the sense of the country or the culture where you are. And then we have individualized AIs that cater more to the ideas and needs and understandings of that individual person. And in the sense of freedom of speech and the sense of freedom of thinking, if you have an unpopular opinion, I don't think it's the job of the AI to correct you and that and try to teach you a new perspective uh, or force a new perspective on you if you don't want to have that. So in that sense, maybe it's not great to wish for that because that would also dictate to us how we can think, how we can act, especially if you think about that AI in the future will be in almost every technology that we are using, also in the smartphones and the websites we're using, there will be AI algorithms running in the background, helping you with the process. And they shouldn't force stuff on you because some people think that's a better opinion than you have. Do you think people can learn stuff faster by the use of augmented intelligence? That is an interesting question in the sense of what does learning mean? Now, in the past, learning meant that you remember things inside of your own mind. You just learn them and then repeat them and you get a good grade for that. Now, this is no longer the case because right now, every day, there is more new information created and pushed on the Internet than you can learn in a lifetime. So it wouldn't make sense to try to learn all of that right now. What we do is to learn where to find it, how to approve that kind of information and how to integrate that information into our workflow. So you are in your job every day looking up a lot of stuff. You're not required to know all of that, especially because it's changing like two or three years from now, it's going to be completely different. And then what are you going to do with your old knowledge? So looking up stuff is much more important. But the other element that is important here is that we are fusing with technology. This is also often overlooked where people think AI is separate from us. It's not separate from us. First of all, AI is trained on all the information that comes from us and it has an output that is trained to please us. So it's very, very closely woven into who we are as people. But also if you think about technology like social media, like the smartphone, like web two, like online stores, these are all now fundamental parts of who we are and our culture. This is how we meet, how we interact. These are now the public places where you interact with other people. What you would have done in the past in a park or a public place or in your pub, you do now online and also with the shops and other things you consume culture, you go and watch Netflix rather to go to the cinema, you play games online with your friends. So technology is already a very important part of who we are and what we do. And actually, if that technology would break down, our society would break down at the same time. So what that means for AI is that it is going to be integrated in our daily life. And that also applies to information and also applies to learning like we have right now with mid journey. You want to have an image. You don't have to learn the process of how to create these different styles and technologies that are used. AI is suggesting them to you and then you can select from that. So basically the curation of that information that AI is creating for you, but also the teamwork together with the AI is going to be that learning process. Are there any advancements in AI that you see playing a bigger role in society itself? A big part of technology is that 
the way that technology works also defines the output of that technology and this also defines the culture we live in so basically we are the result of the technology that surrounds us and how we use that technology and you can see this for example on the internet how information was passed on in the past how you would plan your day how you would talk with your colleagues how you would talk with your friends in the past where for example when you had a classic telephone or landline that was at home you would make a date and then go there and have no information in between while right now you do all of that on the fly so you're not planning ahead for hours and hours you just say hey do you want to meet up okay i'm going to be there here's my live tracking of the gps and find me on that market because my location is right there and we can go for a coffee so that all has become very intuitive, very fast, very short cycles. Also with the media, it has become like that because we have a process where our life and the life cycles are faster. So we have shorter media, especially when you, for example, think like TikTok, where you have media that is super short, that is very minimalistic in the way it is presented to you. Also, the form of the information is very reduced, so it can convey that information, that entertainment to you in a couple couple of seconds and for me that is really interesting when you for example look at old newspapers they start with a long story explaining all the situations around it's all it's like you're reading a book but I want to have just the information so now you have these little splurges of information that tell you a very important story but in a in a matter of 15 or 30 seconds because you don't have more time you want to move on to the next information so that is a big part of who we are now and how technology is involved and a big part of AI is going to assist us in all these processes so we can cut down on the things that are cumbersome and time consuming we leave that to the AI and we are basically like a team leader who has many AI team members under him or her to organize all these things and say okay I want this and then organize this please make that kind of payment please create these kind of images for me and also giving you skills and information that you don't have and you don't need to learn but AI can do it for you and that is a very very important part of our society today because living in our society today would require so many skills and so much knowledge that no person can handle that so we actually need all these processes that filter information for us that fulfill all these processes for us so that we concentrate on the important things and technology is doing the rest and AI is going to help a lot with that Leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and see you soon. Bye. Oh, you're still here. So uh, this is the end screen. There's other stuff you can watch like this or that's really cool. And yeah, I hope I see you soon. Uh, leave a like if you haven't yet. And well, um, yeah.